Cheers, eh? Christ, where's that from? It's Granny's old socks. The I.O. will point you up to town headquarters for a briefing now. Oh, right, sir. Come on, then, Matt. Thank you. Morning, sir. Good morning, Cobra. Ted, up. Come in. Set yourself down. I've got a job for you. If you examine your map, and it's our photograph, I'll explain the ground. You'll recognize this is our battle group area here, and the river Vesa here. This, of course, is the enemy-dominated area. B Company have found tracks leading from the river, suggesting two men have come across. Also, a home door with snorkels and face masks. They may be snipers, saboteurs, or some sort of recce party. B Company have made a sweep for them with no luck. But it's fairly reasonable to assume they're still on our side of the river. Mission. Your mission will be to kill the enemy before they can get back across the river with any information. Your mission will be to kill the enemy before they can get back across the river with any information. Execution. From an examination of the ground, I want you to select a good position from which you can cover the enemy when they try to get back across the river. Take up your positions approximately here. Take all the advice you can get from the OC of 7 platoon. You'll find he's got an extremely good knowledge of the area. I think that's all. Now to service support. You better take rations for at least 72 hours. After the IO's briefing, we collected our equipment, camouflaged our faces and hands, <laughs> courtesy of Max Factor, and donned our ghillie suits. <laughs> yes. We do look a bit like a Sergeant Major's nightmare when we're gillied up. No two of us look the same, because everyone has their own ideas of what makes the best camouflage and what clothes are best to wear. The old camouflage smock with the crotch strap is favorite, because it doesn't ride up when you're crawling backwards. Right. Then we went up to join the OC of 7th platoon in his OP, which overlooked the area in which we were going to operate. Corporal Brox. Oh, yes, I've been expecting you. The mission is to eliminate two enemy infiltrators before they get back across the river, sir. Yeah. And I'd like some help from you on the possible location of a hide. Mm, yes, I'd like, like to be able to cover as much of this stretch of the river as I can here. Yeah. We're um, just here at the moment, in fact, in the OP. Fine. You can always get more information by using maps and air photographs together. Recent air photographs give you a much more up-to-date picture of the ground, and they show seasonal changes in the vegetation, width of rivers and so on. There's something there, sir, that looks very much like a ditch. Do you know anything about that? Yes, there is a ditch along there. I've had a patrol in that area. It's dry and deep enough to give you good cover. Yes, I think that's probably the route we'll take then, sir. I'll just have a look at that. to uh, give us some cover while we're digging the hide. Sir. The OC of 7th platoon was going to provide us with a protection party while we dug our hide. So as soon as I tied up arrangements with him, we went forward to make a daylight recce and to choose the best possible position for our hide. I checked the map for the reference points I'd noted in the OP. Do you notice I've got Hessian wrapped around my hands? Some people wear thin gloves. It's not only for camouflage, but it also protects your knuckles when you're crawling through thorns and nettles or, or over rough ground. Uh, 
I saw that we were about halfway across the open ground we had to cross to reach the ditch. Yes, there was the ditch, about another hundred yards and we'd be there. The ditch would lead us to the wooded area that sloped down to the river. We don't talk much on a stalk. You get so you and your papa can understand each other without it. He's automatically changing the garnish in our headdresses from nettles to grass, because he knows that that's the cover we'll crawl through next. Stalking is a long, slow business. One of the tests you have to pass before you can become a sniper involves getting to within 200 meters of a group of trained observers and firing two shots at them without being seen, even when your position is pointed out to them by someone who's standing next to you. It's not enough just to be a good shot. Right now, we're moving pretty fast as we're still fairly near our own positions. Any risks that are taken must be taken early. At last, we've reached the ditch. Deep, plenty of cover, and dry. All the time we're on a stalk, we keep a lookout for any material which might be useful when we come to build our hide. At the end of the ditch, there was a track I hadn't noticed it on the air photographs. It seemed to be in dead ground, so I decided we must take a chance and make a dash for it. My mate covered me while I crossed. Once we were under cover of the wood, we moved forward more quickly until I came to a point where I had to choose the location for the hide. That tree over there, for instance. It's in the right position, but it's useless because it's so conspicuous. Your eye is drawn to it. Now, the leading edge of that wood would be better. Yes, anywhere along there, as long as it's possible to camouflage, has a good field of fire over the objective and isn't too obvious. A bank or a cutting or a hedgerow would have done just as well. Choosing where to build the hide is largely common sense and practice. This is it. There's the section of river we have to watch. That's an ideal spot for our hide. Finding somewhere to hide the spoil where it won't be conspicuous is just as important. Under cover of a wood, a hedgerow, a ploughed field, those sort of places. Once we've agreed the site of the hide and where we'll conceal the spoil, we crawl forward to peg the hide out. Even though we're under cover of trees, we take this last part of the stalk very slowly indeed. We can't afford to make a mistake now. Sometimes we move only a few feet in a minute. I check each arc of fire and stick in pegs, or I might use a compass bearing for the left and right of arcs and for the center axis of the hide. So when we return later tonight, we'll know the exact spot where we're to build it, and we'll be facing in the right direction. It isn't always easy to remember exact bearings in the dark. stalk back. We've got to be just as careful going back as coming out. 
even though all we want is to tuck into what might be our last good meal for days. You feel better after that? Yeah. Are we going to use that corrugated iron we saw for the roof? Oh, some of it, yes. We mustn't uh, use that bit that was in the open. They'd notice that if that disappeared. We we'll use some of that timber to shore the uh, the roof up as well. It'll be pretty difficult digging over there. I don't know. We'll have the lads from B Company to help us. They can carry the spoil. Give us a bit of protection while we dig the hide as well. Good. Yeah. You check the batteries on the IWS, Mark. Yep. And the radio. Radio's OK. All right. I can't think of anything else. Let's get moving. After our meal, we made a final check of our equipment and then RV'd with the protection party from 7 Platoon. I checked with them the route we would take out to the site of our hide. As soon as it was dark, we set out, using the appropriate formations to cross open ground or the closer country which would give us cover near the river. Meanwhile, the GPMG that I'd asked for to cover the sound of our digging opened up. We crawled the last leg up to the position I'd selected for the hide, and then we started to dig. Empty compo tins are excellent for lining the loopholes of a hide. But make sure they're kept well back so that reflections off them don't give the game away. time the hide was being dug and the spoil carried away and hidden, one of the protection party kept watch through the IWS alongside the man on the GPMG. Basically, a hide is made from a hole dug in the ground, with a roof to keep out the rain and thick enough to keep out shrapnel as well. Enough cover in front to stop a bullet, and a couple of holes to shoot through, but small enough to make it difficult for the enemy to do the same. And when you're in a hide for more than a few hours, like we're going to be, you want room to move about, to brew up, lie down, answer the calls of nature without having to go out. Remember, you're under the eyes of the enemy all the time during daylight. Is the entrance secure? Entrance secure. Right, well, let's get these out. It was still dark when we entered the hide, so as soon as the entrance was secure, I checked our arc of observation through the IWS. We set the radio set up. OK. Normally, one thing you can never do when you build a hide is to nip out front and take a look at it from the enemy's point of view to make sure the camouflage is OK. Of course, if you, if you have to go out front for any reason, check it. Otherwise, you have to know it's right and work damn hard to make it so. Well, that's good. <coughs> we can cover the whole area pretty well. Right, let's get this range card filled out. Okay. <coughs> Axis bearing. Six, two, zero, zero mils. Reference point. A large tree. Range. About 500 meters. Our first job was using the map and air photograph, your partner plots the reference point and its range on the range card. In fact, the range is 450. Right, plot it then. Other reference points and their ranges are plotted throughout the range card so that the exact position of any incident that occurs to our front can easily be noted, thus giving us a ready range to a target which exposes itself.
Lots of people think that snipers spend all their time shooting. <laughs> now, in fact, we spend most of our time watching through binoculars. You've got to have all sorts of qualities to be a sniper. And I think one of the most important is patience. There's an helicopter having a look at grid three, three, four, five, three, nine. All right, log it, will you? I'll let them know. Okay. Hello, two. This is two, three, Delta. Enemy air OP in area grid three, three, four, five, three, nine. Over. Since the chopper. There's a large shadow on Only one member of a pair has a sniper's rifle, yes, yes, although the sights can be easily set for either of them. Okay. The other man takes an SLR with a full complement of magazines in case the hide gets rushed or for protection on the stalk out. A sniper has got to note any movement, however trivial it seems, in case it leads him to something more important. Those rooks that have been disturbed, for instance. For looking at detail, the Scout Regiment telescope is used, as it has a times 20 magnification. There is sometimes so little movement, it seems as though the whole world is watching and waiting for something or someone to make the next move. Sometimes when the sun is behind the hide, if you haven't got the back entrance well blocked up, the light will shine straight through. You check the cover on the entrance before you take over. To someone looking from the front, it looks like a pair of headlights from a car. Our main task is to eliminate enemy snipers. For this reason, we are constantly on the watch for anything that will give their position away, such as reflections. Do you see that? Yep, I've lost him though. Yeah, let me have a look through the scout regiment. Hide loophole. I can't see him. That's all right, I can give you a point of aim. Shall we take him then? I ought to wait till we finished our primary mission, but think of all the damage he can do. We might not get another chance. And we've got a patrol from B Company coming out tonight. We take him then. Right. 300. Wind, two clicks left. Base of lone tree, two feet left. Dark hole next to dead camouflage. Hide loophole. Got it. Ah, uh, fuck, no, wait a minute. The wind's changed. Okay, fire, fire. I bet his mates drop in bricks. If that was me, I'd be lying dug out now. Uh, if it was me, I'd get out of that hide as quickly as I could without being seen and get the bastard who shot my mate. 
Just let him try it, though. I'll make a note of the time. We'll log it down later. I can't see a thing. Me neither. There he goes. Where? To your right. Same range. Take a click off for wind. Ah, ah it's too late. He's gone. Yeah. Well, wherever he is, I bet he needs a new change of underpants. What's that noise? somewhere else. Go on, go away, Daniel. Go on. Go away, you silly butt. Go away. What do you got there? It's a bloody dog. Go on, piss off and play somewhere else. Got him. <laughs> the bloody dog won't stop running for a month. I better log some of this down, eh? 19, long with the IWS. We also keep our ears open. Hey. Psst. That's the patrol from B Company going out now. Sounds like a bit of bloody elephants to me. Could you have got them two snipers earlier? Yeah, well, don't worry about the patrol. You just keep your eyes on that river. the edge of the river. Come on, my beauty. Just come out from behind that tree. Uh, what a perfect setup. Sun shining straight at us, it's our turn to be extra careful. Check personal camouflage and check the entrance to the hide. Another day of watching. Nothing much to liven it up.
Bearing one six zero. Range eight hundred. Enemy AFB. Time sixteen ten. Bearing one six zero. Range eight hundred. Enemy AFB. Time sixteen ten. Right, I've got a target for you. Range six fifty. Wind three clicks left. Crossroads left seven o'clock. There's five men. The second from the right's an officer. Get him first. Fire. Note that the sniper follows through, observing strike of shot. And you never know, another target might present itself. Right, let's call in the welcoming committee. Hello, Golf 2-1, this is 2-3 Delta. Fire mission battery, grid 339 Five three one. Direction one six zero. Enemy O group and vehicle in open. Neutralize for five minutes now. Over. Roger, out. All right, Mal. <coughs> we can move out. Packing this gear up, and we can block these loopholes up. Even though it was dusk when we got our orders to leave our hide, we were just as careful as before to block up the loopholes, so that when we pulled back the entrance cover, it wouldn't give our position away. To make doubly sure, I had an extra careful look through the binoculars before deciding it was safe for us to start crawling back. And of course, we didn't use the same route back as on the way out, just in case somebody had seen us and set up an ambush. Once we had made our way back to a safe area, we went to a pre-arranged RV behind B Company positions. <laughs> Here, we were to wait for a helicopter that would lift us out to battalion headquarters for a debriefing at the end of our mission. You know what I could do with now? Don't tell me. A nice cold beer. No, one of my mum's dumpling stews. Oh, why don't you drop her a line? She might send you one. <laughs> Come on. 